reaching for the extreme writing in sustainable theater. Ladies and gentlemen, I have here before me the evidence by which I will try to convince you to live your lives differently, whatever your paths may be. In this case, all evidence applies to theater, and in particular, theater writing, but like biomimicry in science, such as the false eyes on a butterfly's wing. This evidence may be applied elsewhere successfully. You may or may not be interested in theater at all, but we can learn a little bit more about living sustainable lives by looking into the minds of new playwrights, Naomi Wallace, who sets forth bold challenges in teaching dangerous writing, and David Lindsay Abair, who for the time being writes dangerously. Transgression is the buzzword by which Naomi Wallace sets aims synthesizing a path for teachers of playwrights. Transgression, exceeding of due bounds or limits, the violation of law, command, or duty. This is what Wallace urges us to do, to become dangerous citizens to the status quo, dangerous to the stale norm. Whether it be writing, citizenry, or other endeavors, if we do not engage effort in life, in resistance to all that diminishes us, then our humanity suffers. Wallace justifies proactive teaching of the extreme in writing by her observations that we are living in a society closed off from creativity, hostile to original thought that does not fit service to the corporate paradigm known as the mainstream. Wallace believes mainstream theater exists to keep peace, to simply entertain and bedazzle and distract us from the real world, and that the job of playwriting teachers is to teach writers to break the silence of apathy and disrupt the lie of homogenous living by speaking truth to power. In outlining a plan by Wallace's framework of extreme writing, there are eight points to embrace. Number one, own language. Be responsible for your writing and responsive to writing of others. Number two, ask the question of yourself, to what ends am I working? Is my writing an exercise in collecting, defending property, or a collective endeavor that adds to the community of writers? Number three, in whose interests am I writing? What is my relationship to the status quo, powers that be, and commonly held assumptions and stereotypes? Is my writing confirmation or challenge to the status quo? A larger goal is to help writers be aware of what product their writing is selling, what value, assumptions, and reflexes are subsurface in their work. Number four, teach students to write against their restricted selves and taught selves. Number five, help them identify their ways of seeing the socially and determine choices they make when writing and to critique those accepted ways of seeing things. Number six, study linguistic mechanisms, lingo, jargon, rhetoric, obfuscations, coinage, by which inhuman systems are maintained. Disrupt cliché in the cluttered mind. Number seven, encourage reading of transgressive classics and recent transgressive writings and read history aggressively. Informed writing is valid writing. Writing is only credible if it is informed by political awareness and principles. Number eight, ask the question, how am I diminished by my own ignorance? How have I been silenced? in ways I am not aware of. What is the dream? The dream is that all humans are equal. Our needs, hopes, and dreams are valid and can be answered. The dream is that we can have full, engaged lives and live on earth in peace. The dream should not be quashed. The ideal is not to be feared or discounted in pessimism. It is part of the natural thought process to have dreams and ideals and these should be exemplified in the educational setting. The dream is the blueprint for life, an open theater as established by Joseph Chaikin in 1963 comes closest of all theater genre to the dream. To examine, educate, question, to affect, this is the proactive job of dramatists. This is sustainable theater for the community and the future, a theater that is integral to who we are at a nuclear level, at community, national, and global levels. Sustainable theater does not run entirely or primarily on money. 
It runs and operates day to day from a store of human resource that includes heart, dreams, and ideals shared among peoples of the world. With instant communications and world shared knowledge bases, international and personal borders are now fluid. Wallace reminds us that the distance between us is fabrication, that we should spend our lives tearing down as writers and teachers. Though it is fervently denied and chastised by many teachers of playwriting as being confusing to the watcher, macaronic drama in which languages are combined in dialogue or foreign phrases used is not being ignored in progressive theater. It is the point in which I have been most heavily criticized in my own work as a playwright. Academic teachers of playwriting may choose to ignore theater of difference, non-traditional casting and theater of political immediacy, saying that believability is compromised and the playwright is blinded by agenda. Nevertheless, these theaters will continue, and I urge you to challenge what you are taught and change it up now. In the words of Naomi Wallace, political theater, engaged theater, whatever damn name you want to call it, is not diminished by ideas of justice or theories of resistance. On the contrary, ideas and theories are elemental sparks from heaven. We can only pray that these sparks can burn a hole through our skulls and stir our hands to writing. Look to those who inspire you, who catch you in the dark by the hairs of your neck. This is how I am affected by playwright David Lindsay Abair, who holds nothing back in crossing boundaries and creates compelling stories as well, because there is no neat, tidy genre for his work. His plays are referred to as agonizing hilarity, joyously zany, full frontal lunacy, and black humor. Ben Brantley of the New York Times says, Mr. Lindsay Abair is an expert at tweaking, skewing, and finally, inverting established formula. In Wonder of the World, he grabs us and stations us with a woman who finds an ugly secret in her husband's top drawer. And his top drawer is the evidence of his secret fetish, swallowing and excreting Barbie doll heads. How can we not support her decision to leave him and hop a bus for Niagara Falls? Lindsay Abair's plays are almost always about people on a journey of self-definition. Kimberly Akimbo is about a teenager with progeria, the aging disease, and the part is played by a 60-year-old woman. But her disease is not her immediate problem since she is being inundated by the dysfunctional antics of those around her. Buddy Mears is a farcical journey of an amnesiac who awakens to life in a family that has a violent, dark past. The Pulitzer-winning Rabbit Hole is a play about Becca and Howie facing the death of their four-year-old child in an auto accident. The play is named for a poignant discussion between characters about Alice in Wonderland's journey down the rabbit hole. Lindsay Abair grabs us over and over again to visit a brutal theater of pain and then laugh about it. Does this make us stronger people? It works that way for me, as a sort of school for life. Far beyond, yet including my own entertainment. And is Lindsay a bear forever on the cutting edge? He is scheduled to write Spider-Man 4. We shall see. Thank you.